Steam is our fluid at a pressure of 150 kilopascal, a temperature of 400 degrees C, fills a uh, 2.9 cubic meter storage tank. Ignore the effects of motion and gravity. So we drop off the kinetic potential energy. Let the dead state temperature be 22 C and the dead state pressure 100 kilopascal. Determine for part A the mass of the steam in the tank in units of kilogram. All right, so I'm going to pause. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you think about it and write the equation that you would use to solve for part A. And let's do that as a class and before we rush into part B, okay? How are you going to solve for the mass in the tank in kilogram? All right, so I went around the room and I had a couple answers. I'll, I'll put out uh, answer A, answer B, answer C, or answer D. You click in the one you agree. So we had that uh, M is equal to RT divided by PV. M is equal to PV divided by RT. M is equal to V over V, or M is equal to V over V. All right, 30 seconds is sufficient. Let's go ahead and close, and let's take a look. All right, well, we're not unanimous. Hmm, so if anybody selected either part answer to A or C, what's going on in their mind? They're thinking ideal gas. All right, is uh, steam at this pressure and temperature an ideal gas? Why not? Why did they give us the steam tables? All these steam tables to actually get accurate values for specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, because it really is not an ideal gas. I mean, we have some simpler equations when it is an ideal gas. So uh, if you use uh, this, you won't be completely, let's say, orders of magnitude wrong, but you'll be wrong, right? And sometimes steam behaves close to an ideal gas. But we don't want to trust it. If you have steam tables, you want to avoid making that assumption because if you really wanted to justify using the ideal gas equation, you'd probably have to calculate your old friend compressibility factor and check that it's really, really close to one. And we don't want to go through all that work. Not when we have the steam tables. We just use the steam tables. So we're down to the correct answer is either B or A. Okay. Or D, I'm sorry. Why is it B? Let me close it. What, uh, what is one of the things that an engineer needs to really develop? Hopefully you've already developed it. I'm just repeating old school stuff. Use your units to debug and help you detect your own errors so that you don't submit something that's incorrect. So if we say, how do units work? What are the SI typical units for volume? Meter cubed. How about specific volume? Meter cubed per kilograms. So I'll flip that up, canceled. But if you did it this way, what do you get? <laughs> Inverse. So it's, it, it would be, your units would help you on that. Okay, so that's a helpful little review, hopefully. So what do we do? We go to the steam tables and try to figure out uh, what, what, is the, what is the state of this fluid. Do you have your appendices on you? How would you make that decision? And really, you say, is it subcooled liquid? Is it in the two-phase region? Is it out superheated? So if you flame the table, let's say uh, A2 or A3, they help you. This is our saturation. And so you look and say, okay, Table A2 is everything with the temperatures, kind of the key coming into that table. So at 400 C, you start scrolling down and keep looking. You go to the very bottom of the table. What's the highest temperature in table A2? There's a name for that temperature. The critical. The critical. Yeah, it's at the top of the dome. Now, if you have a temperature above that, can you have two-phase water? 
No, <laughs> you can't. I don't care what you do with the pressure. Play with the high pressure, low pressure. You can't make it two phase. Little review, thermo one. All right. Then you look at table A3. There the pressure is the incoming pressure. Now you have to do the conversion from kilopascal to bar correctly. Is that done correctly? Don't make an error there. Make sure that on exams you convert and you get then in the right table with the right pressure. So if I flame down the 1.5 bar, which is equivalent to 150 kilopascal, how many megapascal is that? 0.15, right. Right? So you got really good at the bar, conversion, kilopascal, megapascal. All right. And then you look at what does this temperature mean? That's the saturation temperature at that pressure, meaning I'm well above. I, both of these conclude you are superheated. So you find the pressure block in the superheated vapor, 1.5 bar. You come down, there's 400 degrees C. And this column was V, this column was U, this column is H, this column is S. And so this is my specific volume that we need, right? So you grab that specific volume, you have the volume of the tank, and you do the calculation that the 2.9 liter, or not liter, cubic meter storage tank divided by the specific volume here. Only thing that I do to make it a little less cumbersome in these notes is I don't put the units like I should. I should put kilogram there, and then I should put meters cubed per kilogram. And then, oh, that's meters cubed, right? Meters cubed for the volume. And then explicitly show. In your homework, please explicitly show how your units work. All right, very good. Now we move to part B. Once we have part A, hey, was there anything new in, that we needed, that we learned in Thermo 2 to answer part A? You know what? The first test is going to be half Thermo 1 all on your own because that's the way the problems are set up. And then the half will be like part B now. What is the exergy in units of kilojoule of the steam in the tank? Right? So... Without learning anything before the first test, you should get a 50. It's all thermal one. All right. How are we going to solve for this? What equation would you use? Well, it's just cap E is equal to M times lowercase e. Or M times, and then you bit big parenthesis because you write it all out, U minus U naught plus P naught V minus V naught minus T naught S minus S naught. I'm going to put in the little KE and the little PE, but then right away, what did they say about the kinetic potential energy effects? They're negligible. That's zero. Strike them. But if somebody said, I need to account for them, the formula for the lowercase KE is one-half V squared. What's the formula for the lowercase PE, the potential energy? GZ. Hey, professor, I thought it was one-half mv squared. Where'd the m go? And I thought it was mgz. Cap ke, lowercase ke. Cap pe, lowercase pe. That's our syntax. I'll try and be consistent. I think the book's pretty good on that. So no mass, no mass. Yes, sir. Um, would we still include your conversion to, to the to times 10 to the negative 3 if we ever get kinetic potential energy? Okay. When you run the SI units on this, if your speed is in meters per second and you square it, the units are going to be meters squared per second squared. You look over here and maybe it's obvious what are the SI units for you, kilojoules per kilogram. And you scratch your head. But only for a little while because you remember from Thermo 1 that there's a unit conversion. That one meter is a hundred centimeters. Oh, where's my equation sheet for that? You know it. You don't need your equation sheet. Kick the training wheels off. Right? Did anybody need an equation sheet for that? Well, coming out of Thermo 1, solving a lot of problems. True? 
There are some things, and that's the one you just reminded us of, that you have 1,000 meters squared per second squared is precisely one kilojoule per kilogram. Not a surprise, true? So remember it, and then don't make that error of failing to convert units. Make sure the units are all consistent when you add them all up. Okay, <clears throat> how do I find this value of U right here? How do I find this value of V right here? Hey, we already found it. Wasn't it that? Where is U? Is that it? Hey, where is S? Is that it? Now the challenge. Oh, okay. The, uh, and where is a P naught? That's right there. Where is T naught? Right there. Right? But uh, if you've solved any entropy problems, you're going to multiply T times S. Let's just check our units a little bit. What are the SI units of S? I'll give you option answer A or option answer B. Is it kilojoule per kilogram degree C or kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin? S. Professor, I need the equation sheet to... Come on, you know this. Just, it's been a long Christmas break. What are the units of this lowercase s? Specific entropy. All right, we'll close it out. And I see that somebody already anticipated me. Is that texting lingo for? Right? Somebody put in C. I don't know. Usually I give that option if they've taken me before. But uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know. But okay, well, it's not correct. All right. So what's the temperature have to be in? Kelvin. And so don't make that mistake. Hey, how am I going to get U naught, V naught, and S naught? Well, I have to say, what is my fluid for this problem? Steam, that's H2O. But probably at that low temperature and low pressure is not steam, but it's still water. And when you do the thought process, what is it at the 22 degrees C and one bar or whatever it was for the pressure, pressure 100 kilopascal? What is the condition of water? Set subcooled liquid. And when it's subcooled liquid, I need to get U naught. Well, that's going to be approximately U sub F at 100 kilopascal. True or false? False, 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 false. Don't make that error, please, on an exam. I've tried to emphasize that. What is it? It's at 22 degrees C. Likewise, the B naught is approximately, this is approximately, a good approximation, V sub F at the 22 degrees C, and the S naught is uh, S of F at 22 degrees C. Remember? I would go back and take a look at, what did I say? Chapter 3, section 10, evaluating properties of liquids and solids. We haven't emphasized solids, but definitely of liquids. When we get those values of U naught, V naught, S naught, here is my value of uh, uh, V naught, right? It's specific volume. Professor, there's an error. You, you're off by a factor of a thousand. Am I off by a factor of a thousand? No, because of this little tucked in 10 to the 3. I know this is Thermo 2, but I'm trying to do a good review of Thermo 1 because it'll be another painful experience if you are off by a factor of a thousand on this. Very painful. Okay. Now, this is my value of uh, U naught. This is my value of S naught. And uh, now, somebody says uh, T naught, we need in that equation. It was 22, 22. I know how to convert to Kelvin. I add 273. Somebody else says, no, it's 22, and I add 273.15. Both answers are correct. But sometimes they will lead to slightly, and I mean slightly, like a 0.1% difference 
in the final answer. I'm going to just try and give you a very brief um, thought process on this. How many significant digits is that number given to, that temperature? Two, not three, not four, not five. I'll tell you what, if it was 21.876, first I'd like to see your temperature measurement device, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, then, yes, use this one. But at 22, the book often just blows in and says 273 plus 22, good enough. Because this is three significant digits, that's two significant digits, it's overkill already. But if you put in 273.15, and I'll show that, you'll get slightly different answers. But it won't be that much. If you look at equation 1.17, what do they really show you for the conversion between 273.15? So I have a slight tendency to throw the extra digits in when I do the calcs. The book often stops at 273 on a lot of calculations. So uh, am I going to take off points for something as trivial as that? And that truly is trivial on an exam? No. So don't worry about it. It's like somebody's like, now you got me really confused. I don't want to lose any points on the exam. Do I use 273 or 273.15? If you use 273.15, maybe I smile a little more, but it won't change the answer. I won't change the grade. Okay? Same in the homework. I think I set the tolerance 2% on Wally Plus. You'll be within that band. Okay, let's continue this thought process. We run it with... Uh, 295 or 295.15. What's the difference? Only the 0.15. Okay, now this is where a student says, which one of these must be wrong. 712.6 or 711.4. They are different. What's the difference? Almost 0.2%. Now then when you want to convert this to kilojoules, don't forget to multiply by mass, and there it is. Now I'm looking at it, 998.1 kilojoule. I could put that in a box, 998.1 kilojoule, and I box it. It's the four significant figures. It's a little excessive, but I've never taken any points off. Uh, somebody puts in 998. I smile a little more. It's precisely to three. I've never taken any points off. I'm happy. Somebody puts in 1,000. I say they really know their significant digits because some of these numbers were only given to two, and they're really taking it beyond what I'm even teaching, the concept. All right? And completely correct.